Cappadocia, this fabled region right in the center of Turkey. Every civilization from the Persians to the, to the Romans and beyond has laid claim to this area. It's one of these places in the ancient world where the history is layered so thick, you hardly even know where to begin. This mountainous region covers 2,000 square miles of craggy cliffs and peaks, reaching 14,000 feet in elevation. It's easy to get lost without a local guide. When you come here, what strikes you is the physical landscape. These fairy chimneys are very famous. All these volcanic deposits have been eroded away to give you these incredible rock formations. That's what's on the surface, the natural phenomenon. But below my feet, is the mystery made by man. What really makes Cappadocia one of the coolest places in the world is the intricate network of underground cities beneath this moonscape. This one here is called Oskanak, and it was discovered in 1972 by a farmer who noticed the water in his field draining into a hole. When he opened it up, he found a sprawling metropolis made of stone. Look at that. This is so cool. I was here 15 years ago, when I was 15 years younger and much less wise, I'd like to think. Back then, only a number of these cities had been excavated. The working theory was that they were all dug around 3,000 years ago to serve as emergency shelters for a few thousand people. But since I was last here, they've uncovered more and more of these underworlds. Archaeologists now believe that there are 200 of these cities, and they're much bigger than we thought back then. I mean, this entire underground city is itself connected to another underground city, presumably connected to another one. That's the suspicion that they sort of had this ability to create this whole underground network. This might be a megalopolis of underground cities. It's a whole, you know, suburban sprawl. <laughs> the features of the underground city are impressive, especially considering they were made with hand tools. It must have taken decades or even centuries to build them. There's another tunnel that way. There's another door there, and it just continues. <laughs> but what I've always been curious about is who built them and why? Luckily, a new discovery 30 miles from here may do exactly that. Halil Sekerel is an archeologist who uncovered some ancient hieroglyphs back in 2019. I wanna know if there's anything in these hieroglyphs that may point to the creators of the underground cities. This is the place up there. Yeah, this is the entrance. Hey, look at that. Oh, this is amazing. That's very old construction. And these are the scripts. Oh, yeah. It's a hieroglyph. Oh, look see. at this. So this thing is a storybook. And these are all symbols. So this shows the mountain is big, the mountain is strong, holy. After some sample testing from the organic materials in the, in the ground, the carbon date says it's 3,500 years ago. Wow. This shows the Hittites lived here 3,500 years ago. Each symbol is one word or what? one name. And you, sh you see that it's shaped like a mountain. Yeah. All this Cappadocia was the Hittite land. Halil and his team interpret the mountain symbols as an indication that the Hittites were claiming ownership of the mountainous region of Cappadocia. But could they have built the underground cities? Researcher and author Andrew Collins has spent years searching for the answer to that question. The general belief was that they could have been constructed by the Hittites. Mm -hmm. But the underground cities were clearly already there before the time of the Hittites. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Andrew's research suggests that the Hittites took advantage of underground cities that already existed. They didn't build them. He says, my timetable is off, and I mean way off. 
there was an archaeologist locally, Omar Demir, and he found whole extensive areas of rock chips that had very clearly come from one or more of the, the underground cities. What this showed was these underground cities could go back much, much older than the time of the Hittites, at least 11 to 12,000 years old. So if Andrew's theory is right, and Cappadocia's underground cities were dug by an advanced civilization dating back 12,000 years into the Stone Age, it might be a whole new chapter in our understanding of human history. I'm interested in checking this out even further. So I'm now headed to check out Gobekli Tepe, an archeological site 200 miles to the southeast. Perhaps clues uncovered there can reveal some truth about the lost civilization of Cappadocia. I smell archaeology. I love the smell of history in the morning. This is the oldest archaeological site in the world. This is late Stone Age. Everything you're seeing here was made with a flint or a stone tool, and that's it. Look at that one over there. That one in particular just blows your mind. That's a 3D rendering of some kind of predator crawling down the side of that pillar. If Stone Age humans had enough skill to construct this elaborate temple, then it stands to reason they could also have dug the underground cities that housed hundreds of thousands in Cappadocia. And if Cappadocia and Gobekli Tepe are linked, this is a culture extending over 200 miles in central Turkey, a large society socially advanced, could this have been the original cradle of human civilization? To see if this could be possible, I'm meeting with Dr. Martin Sweatman, a scientist at the University of Edinburgh, who's researched Gobekli Tepe's ancient ruins. On these pillars, there are these animal symbols, and they seem to be telling some kind of story or encoding some kind of information. We think that most of the symbolism at Gobekli Tepe is all supporting this idea of, of a comet impact. That's amazing. And there is this event known as the Younger Dryas impact, creating a, a great catastrophe, which they think triggered kind of like a mini ice age. It began around 10,900 BC. It was about 1,300 years long temperatures plummeted very rapidly. That ice age transformed a land that looked like this into one that looked like this. And it all happened around 12,000 years ago, the same time that stone tools were commonly used by early man. Now that could be a coincidence, or it could be the motivation to dig underground cities to survive that thousand year winter. I'd like to take a closer look at the symbols on the structures at Gobekli Tepe to see if I can better understand Martin's theory. But going down into the dig site isn't an option. So I'm headed to the local Shanlurafa Museum, where they have an exhibit on the temple. This is a perfect uh, replica of the oldest, deepest layer of Gobekli Tepe. If you look closer, there are lines. The lines represent the comets coming to Earth. The story is told in these pillars. It goes something like this. The meteors strike, bringing an ice age. Then, things above ground get cold, very, very cold. So a Stone Age society moves underground to escape the elements, then emerges after the ice age ends and memorializes their survival at Gobekli Tepe, the world's first temple we still don't know the identity of the mysterious culture that excavated the underground cities of Cappadocia. But some clues that we've uncovered point to an incredibly old and remarkably advanced people who used sophisticated tools and technology far beyond what we believed possible during that stage of human development. There's a pretty grand design to this deal. They would have been sophisticated enough to survive a catastrophic meteor strike and subsequent ice age. It's incredible and then develop a system of writing to document it all. The survivors of this ice age, the Friet Gobekli Tepe, carve these stones telling this story, recounting the record of how, against the odds, mankind survived. 
This would demonstrate that the earliest cradle of human civilization sprung up 12,000 years ago, and clues to their existence are hidden deep in the Cappadocian underworld.